Okay, guys, welcome back to Back to Basics. Uh, last week, we went over the channel bar and how to manipulate it to kind of create your own layout. Um, we actually had Rudy here, was the only one that I think did his homework, just to publicly blast everyone else on the internet. And he created this layout here. Um, this week, we're gonna go into what all these different windows are, how to open them and how to use them, and then kind of down the road, we'll go from there. So my quick spiel about what this is for people who are stumbling upon it now, we are taking, um, myself, I'm taking the lovely people you see below me who are Trade Ideas employees but have not yet traded and kind of showing them the ropes when it comes to, um, you know, the basics of trading. And we're gonna try to get them paper trading and then hopefully actually live trading from there. Uh, we've gone all the way from what is a stock to where we are now, which is kind of setting up and using the system that they're going to be using um, and then from there we're going to go to uh, building strategies back testing them using the AI right all the way till when they're millionaires and don't have to be here anymore hopefully <laughs> that would be ideal but so for today we are going to go through quickly what is all of the different windows all the different ways that you can look at the market with trade ideas and i hope you guys have questions along the way and of course feel free to interrupt um so basically trade ideas has two main window types um and let me just open one of each right now to show you the difference one is a top list and one is an alert window we actually had a question from Marissa last week about how she went to one of the channels, but it was bare. There was nothing in it. She didn't know why. So this will answer that question as well. Just add a chart here. We're going to add on symbol linking. Okay. So our two windows, top list and alert window. Top list is denoted with just a T up in the corner here and alert windows with an A. Uh, essentially, the main difference of them is the way they sort data. And that's what trade ideas is all about. We take the massive amount of data that's given in the market every day, you know, tens of thousands of stocks um, moving all the time on different news, and try to filter that in so that you're only looking at the things that are interesting to you as a trader. Um, there's a couple ways to do that, and every kind of platform does it a little bit differently. We're one of the only ones that has both major ways to do it. So a top list, for example, you can think of like a spreadsheet. So think of kind of your very typical Excel spreadsheet. So, you know, you, you take an Excel spreadsheet and you dump the whole phone book into it. Here's every name that lives in my province or state or city or whatever in this list. Now there's a couple things you can then do with it. You can say, okay, well, I only want people last name M right? And you can put a filter on that spreadsheet and it will filter all the information, but it's all still there. You're only seeing the things that you've removed, the, the, the people without last uh, name M. And now you can then sort that list. That's the other thing you can do with spreadsheets where you can, you know, click on the top and say, all I want to look at is, uh, uh, you know, let's do them in reverse alphabetical order. So you've taken all of the names out there, you've shrunk them into a small spreadsheet, and you've said, these are the ones I want to look at. And then you've said, these are the ones that are the most important to me. So I'm going to re reverse alphabetical order. them, And that's essentially how top lists work in trade ideas. So for example, this one that I just brought up by default, and I'll show you how to configure these in just a moment, um, goes into in the filters. And basically what I've done here, and this is kind of a generic scan that we have, is it stocks between $1 and $5 a share that are doing over um, 150,000 shares a day and have a relative volume of 0.5. So that essentially means that they're doing at least half of what they would normally do at this time. So that that's how I got rid of all the other stocks, anything over under a dollar or over $5 and anything that does less than 150,000 shares are just gone. But I wanna look at the ones that are doing the very most when it comes to relative volume. And again, if you ever want to find out what these are, you can actually inside of trade ideas when you're looking at the filters, you can actually, oh, not from here, uh, from the downloaded version, you can go in and you can go to help 
And I'll actually put in the description of this video the help file that we have, and that lists every single ticker we have or every single filter. So you can just go find it, and there'll be a nice English definition of what it is. But the way we treat relative volume is to say, how much volume is the stock doing today versus how much volume does it normally do, right? So I want to look at one. So I want to take the whole universe of stocks and I want to filter it down to a few stocks, but then I want to see who's doing the most. I want to say, okay, who's doing the most relative volume at this time? And these update every 30 seconds. So I can click on this header row right here where it says relative volume and I can sort. So just like I was talking about on the spreadsheet, I can take that entire universe of stocks, shrink it down, and then say, I just want to look at the top, you know, what is there, 15 or so here, right? So for example, AKTX has done uh, 18 times normal volume today, right? And you can see that if you look at the chart, there's a little volume bump here. So it's a way of sorting all of the stocks in the market, not just by filtering out the ones you don't want to see, but then ranking the ones you do want to see. Some people want to see um, the stocks that have moved the most in the day, right? So any anytime you, you're thinking to yourself, I want the stock that has done the biggest or the smallest of this, that's a good use for a top list. These are great for uh, scanning. And, and what I do quite often, let me show you, when it comes to my weekend scans, anybody who watches my videos will see that I have uh, so many. I'm waiting to get yelled at because I have too many things in my cloud. Um, everything here is a top list. This is my nightly scan that I go through and I scan the markets with. These are all top lists because the market's closed. So. I just want to sort everything so that I'm looking at the things that have done the most or the least, or, you know, for example, this one's looking for a specific technical pattern that has to occur in a certain area, but then I have it sorted by whether it's up or down the most. Um, the other one is an alert window. So an alert window is kind of the other way of looking at it. So one is just taking the entire universe of stocks, filtering it down, showing you a list of what's done the most or what's done the least. An alert window is saying, I want you to only look at this filtered amount of stocks the same way we did in the top list, but I only want to see them when a certain event occurs. Other than that, leave it entirely blank. And these are really good for kind of day trading or even swing trading times that you are focused on something else and you just want you know something to pop up in the corner of your eye or um, within trade ideas you can have it play a sound it can beep at you it can pop up with a little window um, so again these are great i use these during the day when i'm generally focused on something else and i want something kind of uh, big to, to slap me in the face and say you should look at this stock so for example this one here is kind of looking at the same thing where it's saying I want stocks, this one's over $2, and I want it up 2% from the close. So it's using the same filtering values to remove all the stocks that I don't care about, but I only want it to show it to me when it's hitting a new high a day, right? So all of these filters can be met. It can be doing two times normal volume. Um, it can be up 2% on the day. It can be doing the volume I want. But if it's selling off, I'm not interested, right? This is a momentum style strategy. I'm looking for things that are moving up and I want to participate in that, in that ride. So it, it's two different ways of filtering out the universe into a, a lower level of stocks. And then it's just kind of saying, okay, of these, which is most important for certain periods of time. So again, if you're scanning the market, if you're okay with every 30 seconds going through and taking a look at this and seeing what are the biggest movers or what are the biggest volume, this is great. If you want to have something just kind of on the corner of your screen and just alerting you when something happens so you can draw your attention to it then, the alert window is very great. The other people that like to use these a lot are active traders who have tons and tons of alerts everywhere they don't have the time to go through, you know, 10 of these watch lists every 30 seconds to see what's going on. 
they only want to be alerted when something happens. So they just sit there and they wait for their window to say, hey, take a look at uh, PGTI. This thing's pushing up real strong. And then they'll bring it up. So does that make sense to everyone, the difference between those two? Because that's very important. That's kind of the, the fundamental of, of how the system works. Um, so essentially, one can be converted into the other and, and vice versa. You know, so if I wanted to see only stocks with high relative volume, but I wanted to see them doing a certain thing before it alerted them to me, I can build a list with the same filters, but a different alert. Um, and how we differentiate that is when you're in the system, it will say filters and alerts. So the filter question, Michael. Yep. How many, um, like how many can you filter in a top list window? You can filter by a lot. You can filter. I'll scroll down. By well, I mean, not actually, not, I don't mean that. I mean, how many symbols, I guess, can you see? Uh, Does it you, show you like top 50, 100? By default, it's 200, but I think you can go out as much as like 10,000, which is absurd, right? You, you would, could never get through that. But that's kind of entire. What most people do is just to customize how many uh, symbols they're seeing is they just either expand or, or contract the window. But what I will say, if you're getting too many, if you're getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, your filters probably need to be tightened up. You know, at, at that point, you're not really, excuse me, you're not really saving yourself the time that you would from doing this. You know, you'd be better off just scanning the entire market at that point. Yeah, seems that like a sense. lot. I've had that question asked before, though, and I was just curious. I it, in theory, can get huge now. There is, um, you know, computer requirements. It is a lot of data to crunch. So if you're on an older system or something like that, it might have problems with this much. Uh, I generally, I'm a, a minimalist in a lot of things. So I want to really shrink the amount that I'm looking at, not expand it. Um, a lot of people think it's crazy for a professional trader to just use uh, something this to scan the market. I don't have a thousand monitors and all this. I have a MacBook Pro and that's it. Um, so yeah, you can go many, 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 but I would suggest, you know, you're looking at like the top 10 or something like that just to, to save your brain. Um, during the day, I really recommend alert windows because there could be nothing all day. And generally speaking, when a trader finds themselves constantly going through lists and hunting for something, it means that they really shouldn't be trading, right? This is something you guys will find as well. It's like the more you have to look for a trade, uh, the more you shouldn't be trading. So a lot of what I'll do during the intraday um, is I will just open up a list and all of mine will be um, alert windows like this or multi-strategy, which I'll show you in a second, which combine these. But I just sit there and I say, when something comes through, I'll take a look at it. And until it does, I'm going to sit here patiently and, and, and waiting. Um, trading is not, it's not exciting, I'll, I'll tell you. It's exciting in the beginning. And then you realize that if it's exciting, you're doing something wrong. You're probably Are you saying that you money. should be setting a certain amount of parameters to where you should not have to be looking for stocks? Is that what you're saying? That's the otherwise, idea. Otherwise, you shouldn't be trading? Right, exactly. You should have a, a plan, and this is where we're going to get you guys to once you start paper trading, which is coming out very soon. So if anyone's to the audience, if anyone's getting bored of this, the, the trading will start in the next few weeks, guaranteed. Um, but yeah, ideally, you should have a trading plan that says, I want to look at stocks when they do this. And you should just sit there and wait for the system to, to ping you and say, there's a stock doing that thing right now. And then you go look at it and you use your, all the knowledge and everything you're going to gather as a trader and you decide whether to buy it or not, right? It, it's done kind of um, in the moment as opposed to a long time in advance. Now, the other way you can do it, and it's essentially the same thing, is you do a nightly scan. Like I was saying that this is my nightly layout. Again, anyone who watches my YouTube knows that they'll see, will recognize this layout is I will look at stocks, um, for example, CVLT. I, I put this on the list Friday and I put in this price alert and said, if it gets to this price, I'm interested. And if not, I'm not, 
right? And then, you know, it could have just turned around and gone lower and it never would have hit that price and I never would have been alerted. So either way you do it, you should build your plan and what it is you're planning on doing and then just wait until the moment comes that you take the trade, right? There's an old saying that you never get smarter while you're trading. You're always the smartest when you're not trading. So that's when you should be building plans and everything. And then when you come in, you just follow that plan. And this yeah. goes for day trading and swing trading. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same, same with both there's, and we'll go through this, but there's, you know, there's a plan development and then there's anticipation and then there's action, right? So you build the plan, you say, this is what I want to see. And then you sit and you watch and you wait. And it's kind of like, uh, like hunting, for example, right? You're going to say, I'm going to go to this spot because I think there's deer or rabbits or whatever. And I've done my research and I think there's something there. So I'm going to sit there and I'm going to wait. And then there might be, you know, a deer that comes by that I don't know, looks real fast, right? So you don't want to go after him, right? You, you wait for your moment and then you take your shot, right? That's kind of the same with trading, uh, which is what Trade Ideas does a great job at is because you don't have to constantly be doing that scanning that a lot of people are doing. You'll just be presented with. Um, other windows that are cool, but, you know, we're not going to focus too much on. This is a compare count window, which we have, which basically compares any two things. So by default, it compares new highs versus new lows. Um, Jamie uses this a lot and, and he loves it. And I think he makes a bunch of money with it too, where he just wants to see, um, you know, how many stocks are hitting new highs for the day versus how many are hitting new lows for the day and uses that to kind of paint a picture on how he's gonna trade that day. If a lot of stocks are hitting new lows, and not many are hitting new highs, he's probably gonna be trading from the short side and, and vice versa on the, on the long side. Um, the other window, which we talked about a little bit before when we did our fundamental stuff, is the single stock window. And this window basically has um, all of the fundamental data that we talked about. You know, If you wanna know how much the company makes, it's here. If you wanna know uh, how many people are short, it's here. This is kind of the average, um, just like a data dump, for example. So if I click on this, it's gonna change the symbol and all of this information is gonna change. So I can find out how many uh, days to cover, which is something that we talked about, uh, what the change was in 20 days, market cap. And again, any of the filters that you see, you can put into this as well. So that's kind of the, the basics. Now, Trade Ideas goes way, way, way past the basics. Um, and your guys' homework is going to be to actually build each of these windows. So I want you to open up a new alert window and do something with it and open up a new topless window and do something with it. doesn't matter what it is. You know, you're not looking for anything yet. Once we get you guys paper trading and you get a feel of what it is you like to trade, then we'll start going into specifics, but just get in there and play around. The other thing I wanted to cover real quick was this uh, alert window combining these together. So say you had um, multiple of these, which is a big waste of space, right? And for someone like myself who just trades off of uh, a laptop, um, you know, screen space, I think for everybody is, is a rare commodity. So you have all these, but you don't want to utilize the space on them. We have something called a multi-strategy window where you can take all of these windows and combine them all into a single window. So to do that, you go new and you open your multi-strategy window. And by default, it's going to have a bunch of, a bunch of stuff in there. It's got all these, all these types of windows in them. You can either go through and you can just delete them. You can uncheck them. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how to add scans to them. So for example, just clear this out for demonstration purposes. Um, and we want to add in a new strategy. So we want to have, you know, three or four strategies come kind of through this window. We can right click on a current uh, alert window. So it can't be a top list because this uses the same kind of alerting mechanism. Um, and then we can hit uh, collaborate and it's gonna give us this giant complicated link. So if we take that link and we copy it, 
um, and then into the multi strategy window and we hit strategies, new strategy and, and collaborate. It's going to give us a box and we paste that window or that giant link that we put in there and hit okay. And now we have this strategy, this breaking out on volume is now in this window here. So what you can do, and this, I guess I'm just making it up now, but it's part of your homework now as well, because I got to this, is to make a couple of these windows and combine them into one, right? So again, Rudy showed us, let me see if I can grab it, his, ooh, uh, da, 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 his layout here. Um, so kind of your goal is going to be to start updating and adjusting this, right? So that you can kind of go to what was built here and maybe you can have a topless window for your nighttime scan and maybe Rudy, one thing that would be good for you is to take this and if you're looking at it intraday, turn it into an alert window, right? And, and the best way to do that, as we talked about, is if you configure these, you can go into the filters and you can see all the filters that are in there. So if you take those filters and you put them into an alert window and then add, you know, whatever you want to see, right? Breaking resistance or making a new high or making a new low or, or whatever and turn it back and forth and it's going to get you familiar with the product. So um, going to be a little bit of a 